Hey, I'm Josh. And I'm Allison. And we're The Camera Project. Jay is running late. Cue theme music. Today we're shooting in the East Village. In Tompkins Square Park specifically. Today we'll be reviewing the Fujifilm X-T10. It comes in black and silver and it's an APS-C size sensor on a mirrorless body. The camera is unique from a lot of other systems in that instead of a PASM dial to select your shooting mode, you actually have a lot of hard knobs and dials for each of your settings. So you have a shutter speed dial, an aperture dial, drive dial, which makes it really easy just to select if you're in single, continuous low, continuous high, bracketing, and modes like that. And you have an exposure compensation dial. You can also access your settings like your auto focus lock, auto exposure lock. So for the most part, everything's really accessible. Now the camera has an EVF, and when I first looked at the camera, I thought that the small eye cup was gonna be a bit of a problem. I don't have glasses or anything, so it was actually not too big of a problem for me. If you were to have glasses, it might be a bit of an issue just because the eye cup isn't that deep on this camera. In addition to everything Josh just described, the Fuji X-T10 has a nice little pop-up flash that is hidden stylishly inside the body of the camera. Convenient. And then it also has a mini mic input, so you'd need an adapter to make use of that. Instead of the articulated screen, this has the tilting screen that comes out like this, so you can get a few different angles here. The grip on this camera, it's a bit shallow, but you know, not terrible if you're shooting with a kind of smaller prime lens like this. There is an additional grip you can buy. We used the grip the entire time and it did make it quite comfortable to hold. Um, this grip is nice as well because it doesn't block the battery door or the card door here on the bottom. Um, unfortunately, it's you know another thing you'd have to buy and it's like $129, which is a little bit much. But you know, if you're, going to be shooting with it a lot and it makes a huge difference to the way you feel holding the camera then probably worth the investment. Yeah and for me I kind of felt that it did. I expected the camera to be a little hard to hold in general especially with the longer lenses like the telephoto we were using but once you pop that grip on there it's, it's actually pretty comfortable and I found that it wasn't too small in, in my hands at all. The East Village is known for a number of things. Of course there's the nightlife and the bars and restaurants. What do you associate the East Village with Allison? Um, well, specifically we're here on St. Mark's, which is one of the most well-known streets in the East Village. Um, I went to college at NYU, so I spent a fair amount of time in this area. Um, I would say it's changed a lot. That's something that I think of when I think of the East Village. And not that I've even been here that long, but it used to be kind of a gritty, grimy, dirty kind of place to hang out. The next thing we should do is probably go out, shoot a little with the camera, and maybe we'll grab some dinner and some drinks and explore the neighborhood. Overall, I really loved the quality of the images that came out of this camera. Something unique about the Fuji line of digital cameras is that they really pay homage to their beginnings as a film stock company. So something that you'll find is the film emulation modes. A lot of digital cameras will have um, like color modes or picture modes that are usually pretty cheesy and not something most people end up actually using. The ones in the Fuji camera are actually really cool, really gorgeous, and often quite subtle. So they'll produce kind of a unique picture, even for a person who's used to doing their processing in post with their images in Photoshop. So I definitely would find myself using those and experimenting with them, getting some really beautiful, unique images straight out of the camera. There are three autofocus modes. There's single point, zone, and wide tracking. I mostly stuck with the zone mode because it gives you a little wider area um, of focus, and it was pretty smart in finding where my subject was, although, I would say it did hunt a little bit, especially in low light. It was not as fast as I would have liked. I tried to get this five seconds ago and it would not focus. See, now it's struggling. So it's like sometimes really struggling to focus, but what you do get when it does focus is really nice. Since I found myself struggling a little bit with the autofocus, I was using manual focus a little bit as well. The switch to control that is actually on the front of the camera. So it's right here. You can switch between manual, continuous, and single focus. There's also digital split image mode, which is um, something that goes along with the manual focus. You know, if you've shot with a 35 millimeter film camera, my mom's, you know, old Minolta had that. And it's kind of just, um, you know, a neat little retro feature that goes along with the retro styling of the Fuji. 
So we're here at San Loco in the East Village. It's on 2nd Avenue near St. Mark's. Huge menu of Mexican food. It's quick, it's delicious, it's reasonably cheap. Great spot to kick off your night. Um, and good drink. Yes, this is very authentic. Cheers. Cheers. One of the advantages of the Fujifilm system over a lot of the other mirrorless systems is that it has an APS-C size sensor. Now, of course, there are advantages and disadvantages that come with that. But one of the advantages over, say, a micro four thirds camera is that you can get shallower depth of field using the combination of the larger sensor and the really fast primes that Fujifilm makes. For instance, this 35 1.4 gives excellent shallow depth of field and bokeh. In the system, there's also a 56 1.2 and a number of other really fast lenses to help you get that really nice shallow depth of field that you normally expect from a full frame sensor. Now, one thing related to depth of field that I really like with this camera is when you do a half shutter press, it shows you a live depth of field preview without having to hit another button. So it's a really nice way to be able to see the difference between f1.4 and f22. There's an aperture ring to control the aperture on the actual lens, and I found that, maybe I'm clumsy, I was bumping into it a lot when I was reaching up to do manual focus or when I had the zoom lenses on to zoom. So I wish there was a way to maybe turn that off or to keep it there so when you throw it in your bag or if you're reaching up to make other adjustments on the lens, you don't knock your aperture out of whack. Yeah, I guess I understand that complaint. I mean, for me, I did have that happen to me a few times as well. But I did like some of the aspects of having the knobs and dials located right on the camera. I like to shoot in what's typically referred to as aperture priority. And I was able to do that, but when I noticed some quick moving subject matter, I could quickly move the shutter speed knob over to 1 1,000th yeah. or something to lock that in. So that was nice. I felt that was an advantage in a way. And yes, it definitely takes some adjusting if you're used to other types of cameras. For me, one thing that I really didn't like though was the overall speed of raw shooting. Similar to the X100T, the raw processor is just too slow, especially when you're shooting in continuous high mode. I was only able to get maybe six frames out before the buffer ran out, and that's just not that good. I mean, I wanted to be able to shoot faster. Image review was a little slow yeah. in shooting raw. If you're gonna shoot in only JPEG, you'll be fine. But if you're a raw shooter, it can get a little slow. The battery life on this camera we found to be pretty good. Like, yeah, uh, it was very good. We I... were taking turns with it, and I never had to charge the battery. I did because I'm a responsible shooter. But it, you know, it never blinked on me. It never ran out. I never really had an issue with it going out and shooting for two or three hours at a time. And yeah. I had a spare battery with me, but I actually didn't have to use it. So I found that to be pretty decent. Yeah. So we're here at the Holiday Cocktail Lounge on St. Mark's in the East Village. I've never been here before, so I don't really know what to expect. But I've read about it on Gothamist, and uh, it looks pretty cool. They have some high-end fancy fancy cocktails that I'm looking forward to trying. So we're going to have a look through the menu and pick out some tasty. Hopefully we'll test out the capability of the camera Because after all, this is a camera. We'll see. You're just great. Now, Allison had talked a little bit earlier about the low light focusing speed, and I actually did find the low light image quality was good, but I agree, the low light focusing speed was a little slow. Related to low light, I thought that it was a little weird that this camera gives you an option of going into certain high ISO modes above 6400. I think there are three levels above it, and it goes to 52,000 some odd. And what I found really weird about that and it's sort of another raw issue, is that you're only able to access those modes, the high ISO modes, when you have the camera in auto and in JPEG. It's just weird. If they're trying to protect you from yourself, they should probably disable it in auto and let you do it in raw. Because if you're the kind of person who's shooting with all manual settings, you get the implications of a high ISO. You know, obviously the image quality is gonna suffer, but if you need to get the image, you need to get the image, and it should be accessible, and that's a simple firmware upgrade. So the Fuji X-T10 does have a Wi-Fi app, standard across a lot of their new cameras, and I really had trouble with it. I feel like I'm standing here having trouble with pretty much everything, but um, I sat down and I tried to get the Wi-Fi to work with my phone for quite a while, and kept getting errors, and it would not pair. So anywho, Wi-Fi connection, frustrating. Once I got the Wi-Fi app open, it was fine. It didn't blow me away. Um, 
Josh was making the point, there's no way to kind of easily zoom in on your photos and just like scroll through them. You kind of have to go in and out and in and out of all the thumbnails to look at the pictures, yeah. which is pretty time consuming. Um, I wonder if that is the sort of thing that might end up then killing the battery life on the camera or your phone to have to go through that. So I mean, it has the remote function, it ha so you can you know control the camera from your phone. It has import function, so you can bring the photos directly off the camera onto your phone for sharing. But you know, nothing really to write home about there. So the last thing we wanted to talk about on the XT10 in terms of feature set was video. And if you've researched Fujifilm's video implementation you're probably not expecting much, and you're correct if you're not expecting much. I found the video implementation was troublesome at best. Let's put image quality issues aside of moray and things like that that have to do with the sensor. I felt there were things that could be implemented in firmware that should be fixed. For instance, once you go into video shooting, if you're in manual focus, there's no focus speaking, so it's really hard to be able to focus. If you go into single or continuous focus mode, there's no way to choose when the camera is going to focus or even where it's going to focus. So it's pretty much a no-go for video for everything other than the casual clip here and there. If you're mainly a photography shooter and you just want to be able to get a clip here and there, mm -hmm. but it's not good. I was going to say great, but it's not even good. It's not good. All right, so Allison, as your inaugural official review of the camera project, I wanted to know what were your final thoughts on the Fujifilm X-T10? I think it would be great for if you're a film enthusiast and an analog shooter or somebody who's just really into cameras and getting a unique, special look out of your pictures. Overall, the pictures that I got out of this camera were great. They look awesome. Um, the depth of field is just, you know, exceptional. However, I found the actual experience of shooting with the camera a little clumsy for me. Again, the aperture ring, the, the physical knobs and dials on the camera, a little tricky for me as a more native digital shooter. One real advantage to the Fuji system is the lenses and the wide aperture primes that they offer. And I think that's a real advantage. So even if you're comparing it to other cameras in the APS-C line, I find that a lot of people who are talking really favorably about the size and weight of the Fuji cameras are comparing it to the full frame camera that they came from. But it's an APS-C size camera, so we could compare it to APS-C DSLRs as well, and even smaller and lighter ones like the Nikon D3000 series and the small and light Canons. The one place where the Fujis do really shine is those really fast lenses which can give you the really shallow depth of field from this APS-C size sensor. Overall, I think we agree there are some quirks to the system and yeah. some things that can definitely improve, but it took great pictures. This is a great camera for still photography. One thing I'd like to add about this camera and Fujifilm in general is a lot of the things we've talked about are software-related issues. Now, obviously, the processor speed probably isn't going to improve, but things like the video implementation, that's something that could improve in firmware, and that's somewhere where Fuji really shines, in that they'll add features to year-old, even two-year-old cameras that weren't there. And I'm not talking about bug fixes, I'm talking full-out features that can change the shooting experience and, and change the camera's overall feature set. So I hold out hope for some of those features on this camera, and it's sort of a really great thing to know when you're buying into the Fuji system. So, now that you know our thoughts on the Fuji X-T10, please subscribe to our channel if you want to see more reviews. So once again, we'd like to thank our friends over at Unique Photo. If you live in the tri-state area, please check out the store. And you can also check out their Unique University for great learning and classes so you can learn about your new camera gear. They've got great camera reps working at the store that can explain all the details of the cameras as well. Yeah, and if you don't live in the Tri-State area, you can go online and check them out at uniquephoto.com and order all your gear from their website. Missing my childhood here. Allison, let me look to see if you have tacos in your teeth. You're good. Also, is this an upskirt? It's definitely an upskirt. Because I don't yes. trust these idiots. No, don't yes, trust it looks good.